Also, the Food and Drug Administration has given emergency approval to a Trump administration plan to distribute millions of doses of anti-malarial drugs to hospitals across the country. The agency says it is worth the risk of trying unproven treatments to slow the progression of the disease in seriously ill coronavirus patients. Joey Gilbert, a local attorney, joins us now live by Skype. Joey, Governor Sisolak banned the use of malaria drugs last week for COVID patients if they are not in the hospital, citing not enough studies have been done and there are risks, but you feel that's a big mistake. Recently, some real personal experience uh, with the coronavirus. Yeah, absolutely. You know, at the end of the day, Governor Sisolak maybe needs just, you know, jump on Google and you can look and see that uh, in France, they've been studying a Kona, the coronavirus for over a couple of years. There's been um, numerous studies done. They've they've had success with hundreds of patients. This is not um, uh, an unproven drug. First of all, let me back up. Um, hydrochloroquine has been around for you know more than half a century, almost 70 years. It's been prescribed off label for decades. It's a it's a cheap malaria antiviral drug that can absolutely knock the coronavirus in the dirt, knock it out. That along with the Z pack and some zinc sulfate. And it absolutely should be made available uh, immediately. And Joey, yeah, tell us about your dad. Just last week, we had this story. He was in pretty bad shape in the hospital. And yeah. now he's doing much better. So let's walk through that. My father works, you know, uh, works on the front lines. He's a physician. He works with law enforcement. He works with all, all of our public uh, servants. And so he's out there on the front line. They think he might have picked it up in the Las Vegas airport, believe it or not. He brought it back home. It took him about, and this is true, guys, where you're being told to stay home. It took about seven days for the for the signs, the real signs to show up. It started with some fatigue and a splitting headache, and then he woke up with a fever, and the rest is history. Uh, he was tested Monday about 1.30, 2.30 p.m., and he had his results back that same day at 6.30. And uh, about a week prior, I had done some research, saw this study in France, and told my dad, hey, we should be careful and get a couple of these. Now I know that's exactly what the governor and what some people were worried about it. There was a run on these meds, people were hoarding them. But now we've we've passed, you know, through that. My father was able to take this medication uh, within an hour of filling it at CVS. He was able to go home, his fever dropped from 103 to 98. His headache disappeared that he had had since Friday. And today he was on his treadmill for 30 minutes. He's got a tickle in his throat and a little congestion. But he's going to walk out of this. And he said it was like a mild flu. My mother uh, was diagnosed on Thursday. I believe that in here, same example, if you're uh, living with a, a COVID patient, you test positive, automatically you're on this. There's, there, there's no question. And it should be the pharmacy of your choosing. You just call. The county should provide it. This is a cheap, cheap way to keep our hospitals from being overrun and our elderly and those that are in not the best shape from dying. But you think these drugs did it and helped him turn around? Oh, no, I don't, I don't think. I, 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 I'm, I'm sitting here telling you that I watched my father turn, you know, from what looked like a very bad situation happening. My mother on Wednesday, Thursday, I mean, I, to say I've been nervous is an understatement. And, you know, you're talking about someone 70 years old with asthma. These are the people that we're most worried about. Why would you not distribute this very, very inexpensive uh, you know, drug that's used for malaria. And, and, and here's the other thing. Where, where are the results? Look at Africa. Look at how many infected cases in Africa and how many deaths are in Africa. And they're all on malaria medication. This is a, and, and right now I think the, the board, the governor can, with the FDA's emergency approval, we can now immediately amend his emergency regulation to give practitioners, pharmacists, and those on the front lines, our law enforcement, our first responders, get them on this. So Joey, have you had any contact with the governor about uh, this decision? And again, to clarify for people, you can still use it in the hospital, just it can't be prescribed by a physician sure. to be taken at home. It's, it's, ridic it's absolutely ridiculous that you have to get to such a state. So let's back up here. If the whole scare across the country is overwhelming our medical system and our healthcare system, then why wouldn't we do something to prevent that? This will limit the ER visits. This will limit the ICU, ICU beds to those that absolutely need it. It'll limit people being put on ventilators. So um, absolutely, it's something that um, I've seen make a huge difference. It's something that I know will make a big difference. And most importantly, the state needs to get back to work. They can use this to treat hot spots, people that have tested positive and people that have left areas that had high infestation rates and get them and get them on this medication. It's again, the side effects are a stomach ache, 
and they even give it to pregnant women. So again, I just don't see the risk. We got to remain Nevada strong should, and protect we just, everybody. We need to point out there have been no widespread studies on this here in this country, I guess. But you feel strongly about this. The governor <laughs> feels strongly about this. Have you talked to him directly there, about this? There's a New York doctor that's with 350 patients. He's had zero hospitalizations, mm -hmm. zero innovations, and zero deaths. If that's not enough yeah. proof in the pudding, I don't know what is. So yes, Governor Sisolak, it's time to make a little amendment to your emergency regulation and give this to the people on the front lines and anybody that's test positive for it should have access to it immediately. Really quickly though, Joey, have you had any contact with the governor or his uh, office about this? I have not reached out yet. You know, I thought that being loud enough on Facebook and giving a signal to some friends in, in special places, I heard uh, uh, Ms. Titus was working on it as well. I figured, you know what? Those that know about this should be acting. It shouldn't take a local attorney and blood on the governor's hands to get him moving. But if that's what it takes, we're going to lose older people that we love in this community because they didn't make this available straight up. Well, Joey Gilbert, mm -hmm. first and foremost, we're happy your parents are doing better tonight. Mm -hmm. That's good to yeah. hear. You. Thank you so much. I'll always be fighting for this community. I love this place and I just want to see people get the help they need. All right, Joey Gilbert, thanks so much for your time.